Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show we're going to be building a bracket for your drill press to use your shop vac as a little bit of dust collection. So drill presses are notorious for having absolutely zero dust collection whatsoever. And if you're using a sanding drum or a Forstner bit or a circle cutting uh, unit, then it really makes a mess and uh, sometimes it makes it a little difficult to see your work. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a bracket that mounts to your post of your drill press that will hold uh, your shop vac hose so you'll get some form of dust collection. Now this isn't a hundred percent dust collection but it's going to help you out here. So what you're going to need for starters is just a scrap piece of three-quarter whatever. I'm going to use a piece of three-quarter oak and we're going to start off with a square being four inches by four inches by three-quarters of an inch thick. So we've got our 4x4 four four inch block of 3 quarter oak and what I've done here is I've marked a line at half an inch in from the one end and I've also marked a line in at 3 quarters of an inch in. Um, I've done that because I want to make sure that I have at least a half an inch of material for attaching this to the upright post of my drill press and then I don't want to do any cutting or removing of material at least for another quarter of an inch. So in order to have a hole here for our dust collection or our shot vac we're going to need to make a two and a quarter inch hole. So we're going to mark the center of that here for two and a quarter and that would be one and an eighth will be the center of your two and a quarter inch hole. So I'm just going to mark that and just put a little mark line there and then as well I need to mark the center of this block. We know that's four inches so we're going to mark it at two inches and this now will be the center point of our two and a quarter inch hole. So you want to take your compass now, embed it in that spot and then adjust your compass so that you're at the edge of that line at the three quarter mark and then draw your circle. Now this here is going to be the hole that is going to hold your shop vac hose. Now just to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to extend uh, extend my compass and just make a second hole here or a second circle here for, uh, for me to cut with or cut on and I, I know that's confusing I, I didn't say that very well but that's early I'm tongue-tied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this first mark that we made at half an inch and I am going to just mark it like that. So what we're going to end up with is we've got this hole here which will hold our um, hose and then we have this second hole that will be like the ring that will hold it and in retrospect in looking at that um, I think I'd like to see that a little thicker I think a quarter inch of material to hold that hose is a little on the shy side so let's make that just a touch bigger you can see how uh, specific and uh, how much of fine woodworking this is just like that there we go okay I like that better a little extra material there to hold the hose so with that now being done um, 
we're going to head over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut around these markings but as well what we also need to do is cut out this center hole and in order to do that at the scroll saw we need to drill uh, a blade entry point. So here we are at the scroll saw. I've got a number seven reverse tooth blade installed and the first thing that you want to cut here will be your hole for the center and uh, I, I really think that it's strange that for a tool that was designed to cut curved lines one of the hardest things to cut is a circle and uh, the reason for that is that you need to keep your feed of material and your rotation at the exact same ratio if you feed too fast you're going to go off the lines if you rotate faster than what you're feeding you're going to be doing a tighter circle and not following your lines so they have to be at the exact same speed and that takes uh, practice there's no there's no trick for that it's just practice so we're going to go ahead now and uh, I'm going to cut out the circle that's going to hold our uh, our shop vac hose. And just like that, um, the hose, or sorry, the hole is, is cut. So now what we're going to do to make it a little beefier is that three-quarter inch line that we cut, we're going to cut up to that line, uh, up that line just to get to the edge of our larger circle that we drew here, and then cut around the perimeter of that circle, and then back outside of that three-quarter inch line. Now I'll just show you a little trick here for getting sharper uh, interior cuts like this. Spin it around and back your blade into the cut. And once you get inside, then you can rotate your blade. And you'll have a nice sharp corner in there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting this, this outer diameter circle. When it comes to working on the scroll saw, don't be afraid to spin your stock. That's what it's designed to do. I mean, you're going to break some blades. That's all there is to it. But don't be afraid to spin it. You can see here that I'm not rushing things. I'm just taking it slow. There's no need to rush through this and plow through it. Let the saw do its job. that we've got our shape cut out. Alright, 
So now that we've got this, let's head over to the oscillating sander. I've got my vacuum hose here and this is the piece that we've cut and it fits nicely on here but it gets really tight at the hose. It's not going anywhere and that is the purpose for heading over to the oscillating sander. We're just going to trim this up a bit just so it fits snugly over the hose. I shouldn't have to force that on. So we're going to head over there and, and take care of that and shape this up. We've got the interior of this sanded. Let me just show you the fit that we've got here. It goes over the hose. It's, it's smooth sliding, but yet, hear that rubbing? It's still snug, so that when it sits there, or when it's in that position, it's not going to be falling out. So there you have it. So now let's uh, let's move on to installing this. What I've got done here is here's our original vacuum bracket, and I've cut uh, another piece of three quarter inch. In this case, I just used walnut only because it was what I had lying around. You can use whatever you like, but I've cut it to the same dimensions as this little end lip here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to drill through both of these and I'm going to install a nut and bolt between the two with some washers in between. And the purpose for this is that when it's mounted to the drill press post there will be some pivoting here so that we have some adjustment to this bracket. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you the results. So here's our original piece. I've got a bolt counter sunk into here and what we're going to do is take a couple number 10 washers and I've countersunk and glued in with some CA glue a nut on the uh, back side of this piece and all we're going to do is we're just going to spin this onto here um, so that it sits up flush at the other end here. Once we get this spun on, of course, um, we're going to go ahead, tighten it down, and I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on this just to keep it from loosening up, and uh, I'm going to cut this bolt flush. Well, the actual mounting of this jig couldn't be more simple. It's nothing more than a couple of four-inch hose clamps and um, what you want to do is you want to place your vacuum hose into your bracket and then from there align it on your back post so that your hose is pointing at your chuck. Once you get that of course in line then you can tighten up your hose clamp. Now I don't have 10 hands so it's kinda hard to hold everything and tighten it so I'm, I'm just using um, a socket in my cordless drill on low speed just to kind of help me do it a little faster. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead now and install the second hose clamp on the bottom. Um, I have this hose lined up where I would like it so I can remove the hose itself now and just go ahead and mount the second clamp. And here we have the the uh, the hose clamp here. Both of them are tightened up, and our assembly is solid on the the rear post of our drill press. You can see that we've got the adjustability up and down. Should we need to point up or or down to uh, either a higher or lower drill press table setting, and um, what I'm going to do now, of course, is. I'm going to set the hose in here and uh, I'll set up a Forstner bit and show you guys how well this works. 
Well, here we have a scrap of oak, and um, we've got ourselves a one and three quarter inch Forstner bit here. This is a little close, so but of course that's the beauty of this little bracket that we've created today. We can adjust it. So now we've moved it back away from our piece. Uh, you can see if I start it up, it's no way, shape, or form in danger of getting caught on that uh, on on this hose. So I'm going to go over and turn the vacuum on, and let's take this for a test spin and see exactly um, what kind of a job it does with the removal of the shavings and dust when it comes to using it on the drill press. Let's just back the camera up here to see after drilling that hole exactly how many shavings uh, we have on the drill press table and considering the size of the bit and the amount or the, the size of the depth of the hole um, this is not a lot of shavings uh, I'd, I'd say a good 90 to 95 percent of them went up the hose as you could see in the video clip so all in all um, looks like uh, a successful experiment and uh, a great little project. And there you have it. Pretty cool little project. Um, it's something I've been wanting to toy with for a while. Never really came to fruition until today. Uh, so some three quarter inch scrap cut four inches by four inches, a couple hose clamps and uh, a bolt and a nut with some washers. Yeah, pretty inexpensive. You probably got that crap lying around your shop anyway. Guys, give it a try. It's a great little unit. Play with it. Play with some more adjustability. I think uh, I might like to make another one for use on my lathe and uh, maybe a little more adjustability for that. Um, who knows? Maybe it's another uh, video idea. Guys, thanks for watching and I'm going to see you again next week with, you guessed it, another woodworking video. Thank you.